Hi, I am Felicia Brino of FeliciasWorld.com and today I'm going to show you how to use some new log cabin paper foundation templates that I've developed. So I have made these little books and inside of them you will find lovely little uh, foundation paper piecing templates to make four inch log cabin blocks that are so cute and little with quarter inch bars. And you know how in quilting usually when something is small we assume that it's hard? So what I'm going to show you today is how incredibly fun and easy it is to make these little blocks. You don't really measure a whole lot, no quarter inch seam allowances to sweat over and you'll make beautifully um, piece blocks, very accurate. So um, I have a couple of projects to show you that I've, um, that I've sort of made with these um, templates so far. I have this little wall hanging. I'm not going to fold out the whole thing. This is a wall hanging that I have made using uh, Michael Miller Cotton Couture. Uh, you can see I used a sort of a dark graphite um, on um, sort of the diagonal half of the block and then sort of chalky pastels on the rest. The kit for this quilt is available on my website feliciasworld.com. So that's an option for those of you who um, get scared when picking your own colors. Another project that I have also done with the same blocks is this pillow. And so here you can see a totally different effect. Here I've gone all the way around uh, with different colors. And so same template, ex completely different effect. So um, let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to make your own like beautifully pieced little log cabin blocks using these templates. We're gonna have some fun. I also wanted to show you my, my setup here uh, in my studio. I'm so lucky. I have several amazing sewing machines that I work with. Today I'm going to be sewing on the Janome Skyline S9, which is brand new on the market and I love, love, love it. It's such a cute little machine and it's just a great little workhorse. So it's standing here on standby. And uh, what you can see here, so I've set this up for foundation paper piecing and you can see my design wall in the background with a silk project that I'm also working on. And then when you're doing foundation paper piecing, you're going to be ironing a lot, like between every single piece. And so instead of getting up and walking over to the ironing table and, and working that way, um, I have a little um, ironing surface that I put next to my machine with a hot iron. The iron is on a dry setting and it's on a hot setting and the reason you want to dry iron is that moisture can warp or shrink your paper and that is not going to make anybody happy in this process. And then you can kind of see that I have a pile of fabric strips laying on the right side of the machine. So I'm a left-handed person so most of you guys are right-handed. 90% statistically. So you may want to put your iron on the other side or maybe make yourself a little table um, next to you so that um, that it feels natural for you whichever way you need to turn or stretch or whatever in order to to get onto your iron every between every piece that we sew. So here you're seeing the actual booklets of paper piecing templates that we're going to be working today in our log cabin tutorial. Each of these books has a little single, let's see if I can find it here, single page that is the um, sort of a short set of directions for how to use these um, these templates. If you are new to foundation paper piecing, this is probably not going to be all that helpful for you. So that's why we have these video tutorials to help you get off to a good and happy start instead. And then here you can see there's 48 uh, paper templates. If you are making a larger project, then you are going to need more than one of these blocks. And of course, the, the actual blocks here are only four inches. They're pretty small. Um, but as you will see today, the fact that it's small doesn't actually make it any harder when we were working with these log cabin blocks. So often in quilting, when something is tiny, we think it's going to be really complicated and hard. But as you will see here, when we're working with paper foundations, um, the size doesn't really matter all that much. So the strips here are going to be a quarter inch wide, um, but you're going to cut yours wider than that, of course, because of seam allowances. And um, in this uh, model quilt, I chose to make half of my bars in a dark sort of graphite gray, and then the other um, bars in like, sort of chalky pastels to get a nice contrast. And um, 
The fabric I used was Michael Miller Cotton Couture, which is my absolute favorite solids in the whole world. And um, the dark color here is a color called graphite. And then I used a variety of different sort of chalky pastels. I do have kits available at my, um, on my website. Uh, feliciasworld.com if you're um, interested in using the exact same colors that I used. If you have been quilting for a while, you are probably used to worrying a lot about your quarter inch seam allowances. But quarter inch seam allowances are not very important when you're doing foundation paper piecing. You just need to have safely large enough seam allowances that your work doesn't fall apart. But whether it's, you know, a quarter inch exactly or a little bit more or a little bit less probably doesn't matter so much but since you may be in the future working with templates of different sizes I want to teach you how to calculate the size of the centerpiece and the width of the strips that you need so if you look at this template here you can see that the center is somewhere in the vicinity of three quarters of an inch. And you could cut it an inch and a quarter and have a, a quarter inch seam allowance all around and that will be pretty comfortable. But if your pieces are a little bit bigger, it actually doesn't really matter so much. So um, you wanna have at least a quarter inch all the way around. So again, if this was is one and um, about one and a quarter inch or sort of three quarters of an inch wide then um, then cut your center square no smaller than one and a quarter inch and if you put the one that I have pre-cut here you can see that I'm, I cut mine quite a bit bigger that might be a little overboard but it doesn't actually cause any any serious problems at all then in terms of your your actual logs these are a quarter inch wide and um, that means that your strips here can't be any narrower than three quarters of an inch wide, but that is actually a little bit uncomfortable to work with. Um, not because it's hard per se, it's just more comfortable to sew and you don't have to be quite as anxiously precise if your strips are a little bit wider so that these strips are all one inch wide and that gives us a little bit more wiggle room a little bit less anxiety uh, about you know having enough um, seam allowances on both sides of the strips and it allows us to measure a lot less in the sewing process which I think will make you happy. When I'm cutting fabric for my log cabin projects, I actually don't cut the strips down to the length of the logs. In other words, I don't sit here and worry exactly how long that strip needs to be. I just take all of my fabric, cut it the whole width of the fabric piece that I have to work with, which is in this case, you know, 40, 44 inches. And I take that over to my sewing machine and then I cut them to length as I go. So everybody has their stitching personality and some people may feel inclined to sort of measure things ahead of time. But I find that I work faster when I just cut as I go. And it also um, works better for me because I tend to kind of improvise which color goes where. And so I don't actually know um, before I sit down. Um, exactly what I'm going to want wear and therefore I also don't know how long I will want these fabric pieces to be. So just pull all of your strips over to your sewing machine and we'll go on to the next step. We are going to start off with a little tour of the paper template that we're using. As you can see there's a lot of numbers here and those um, numbers actually indicate the order in which the paper pieces or after the fabric pieces excuse me are going to be sewn down and then the solid lines are going to be sewing lines the exception to that is this outermost line you don't actually sew on this line that goes all the way around here as you're assembling a block this is this line is actually what you're going to be sewing on when you're assembling your blocks into a quilt after all your blocks are finished so the last lines that you'll be sewing on are the second to outermost layer of solid lines so between 15 and 19 and 17 and 21 and so forth I'll um, I'll show you that when we get on the sewing machine the outermost line here that is um, stippled that is your seam allowance your quarter inch seam allowance so that after you've assembled your block you can trim your block down to this line so if you're brand new to paper piecing one thing that we should probably clarify is that this side that you're looking at here 
This is what goes up on the sewing machine. This is what you're looking at when you're sewing. Your fabric actually ends up on the underside of the paper so that your block, as you're sewing on this top side, your block is actually forming on the back side here with actual fabric. So we're now ready to start assembling our block and I have a paper foundation here. I have a white square that I'm going to use in the center and then I have a blue piece of um, fabric that I'm going to use for my first round. So in order to start, and it's always trickiest to get these blocks started, I'm going to turn my paper upside down and you can kind of see the numbers and the lines through the paper. So I'm going to center that onto my paper. And in my case, just to kind of, um, while we're doing this, I'm going to put a pin in. I'm going to start sewing on top here. That's where the number two is. I don't want my pin on top of that. I'm just going to uh, put a pin in right there for now to keep the fabric in place while we um, get ready to put the first strip on that we're actually going to sew. So we're going to start with this blue fabric. And I need it to be a little bit wider than the window that says number two on it. So uh, again, it doesn't matter here if we have exactly quarter inch seam allowances. I know that these strips are quarter inch wide here, each of these little logs. So to make my life really easy, I'm gonna take my little scissors and I'm going to cut it like this. I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna put it down here, sort of line it up with the white centerpiece. And this uh, will actually, I'm going to put it a little bit down here. And then I'm going to put my little flat headed pin in. This is the one pin I'll be using for this entire project until I lose it. Now, here is the thing. At home, it's hard to demo this on a video, but at home, you will now hold your block up against the light and you will see the fabric through um, the paper and you'll make sure that the fabric is actually um, covering the number two window and the center window and that you have a fair amount of fabric all the way around the space. And we're going to sew on the two line. Now when we're doing foundation paper piecing, we do need to sew past the lines that are marked on the paper. So in this case, we're going to attach piece one and two. So we're going to sew on this line here between one and two. But since um, we then will be sewing on three, we also need to go past the line. So we're going to start sewing here in the three window. So on the line between one and two, so past where it ends well into the five window. Again, you don't have to sew a quarter inch past. It doesn't really all that matter that much, but I wouldn't go any less than say an eighth of an inch here. When you set up your machine for foundation paper piecing, use a straight stitch and set it to a really short stitch. So what you're looking for is a stitch that's short enough that it perforates the paper, but it's not so short that your paper foundation falls completely uh, apart on you. So uh, it also, as far as the color of the thread, I'm using white here. You could use uh, a different color if you wanted to because your stitches are going to be really, really short. On the Janome here, it's 1.4. I think on my Bernina I use a 1.4 as well. Um, because your stitches are going to be so short, the thread really isn't going to show much. So don't go out of your way to find something obnoxiously contrasting, but don't sweat it if your thread isn't matching your fabric exactly either. Also notice that I'm using an open-toed foot. I want to be able to see what I'm doing. And again, quarter inches seam allowances don't really apply here because we're sewing on top of the paper. So I'm going to lower my pressure presser foot and lower the needle just to kind of make sure that it's lining up with this two line. Notice that I'm starting before the line that I'm sewing on and then we're going to sew all the way down. It's a really short distance, right? We just sewed an inch and I'm gonna cut my thread and now we're ready to press out the first piece. So we're back to the ironing station. We're back at the ironing station and turn this over. Take the pin out. This looks very unimpressive at this point, I know. And we're simply going to open up our seam that we just sewed and press it flat. And then we are going to lay down our next piece. So again, we just sewed here between one and two. I'm gonna cut that thread off. 
And now we're going to put the piece for number three down. So I know roughly how long it is. I've done a lot of these, but in your case, if you're new to this, we're going to put the fabric down. I'm going to take the little snippy scissors, cut off a piece, turn it back over. I, I know that it's going to be right here. This will feel a little scary for you in the beginning. Um, when you're uh, at home, you will look up against the light and you will see that you have your, your line covered here between two and three. I have enough experience to almost not even need to look anymore because I've made, made a few hundred of these blocks. Put a little pin in. Some people don't like to pin. I like to pin. Um, and then I'm going to put this back on the sewing machine for the next step. If you miss your hole like I did here, I felt like I wasn't completely lined up, then just needle back up and kind of reposition it. And we're sewing down. You know, I could sew all the way off the paper if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter. And we're gonna cut it and we're back on the ironing pad. So now you see why it's so important to have your iron and your sewing machine set up really, really close to each other so you can just sit and sew. If not, you're going to get a lot of exercise, which can be good too, but it makes your quilting slower. Here you can see our first circuit, our log cabin block is done and we're going to change color. That's always fun to build the blocks and kind of get to try on new colors. And that means that if we go back to this side, we're now going to sew on piece number six, which is going to be right on the outside of, of piece number two. So at this point um, in the pillow that I showed you earlier, I would have used white, but in order to just generate a little bit of contrast, uh, for those of you watching this, on top of the white paper, I'm going to use the light blue here. I'm going to put my piece down, and we're back on the sewing machine. So I've sewn on a couple of more pieces and I want to show you something that you want to consider as you're making these blocks. So we here have a light blue fabric on top of a, um, or outside of a much sharper um, blue fabric. And what's going to happen very likely when we use high contrast between our fabrics is that this little piece of the dark blue that's showing up at the seam allowance there is going to show through when I uh, iron down the piece. So uh, what I do, and the quilting police uh, very likely will not like this, is that I basically just fold. This works out just great, by the way. Your quilt will be just lovely. Um, I just fold this down. This feels a little cumbersome now because I'm trying to do this in front of the camera. In real life, this is very painless. Um, and I basically just cut these, um, this little bit of extra fabric off so that we don't have it sticking up. And now you have that light blue fabric covering the dark blue and then you get that extra layer. And now you can see um, there's no show through of the dark blue. And that makes your quilt looks, look really nice and crisp. So just one way to kind of um, avoid measuring and to um, relax when you're sewing and um, you're using tiny, tiny stitches here. So as long as you have about an eighth of an inch seam allowance or so, nothing is probably going to ever slip out or unravel in your quilt.
So we're almost finished with this block. Just a few more strips left. I always end up, when I'm sitting like this, I always end up with a big pile of, um, big pile of fabric strips in my lap. It's usually just how, how things flow. Hmm. See if I have enough of this blue to get us all the way around. These strips have been laying around in my scrap pile for a little bit. Let's see, put that right there. And this is a great way to use up scraps, by the way. So if you have leftovers from other projects, like, mm, you know, most of us do, then this is a great way to kind of showcase fabrics that you have just little bits and pieces left of. Make something cute. See here I have um, the green sticking out underneath the darker blue, but I don't really worry about that because they're both about the same sort of intensity if you want, so there's no show through. And then last little strip. I have a little boo-boo here. Um, I'm, I ran out of this color because I'm a terrible planner, apparently. And I have selvage here. So I'm going to have a little bit of an issue, but we're just going to pretend I don't have an issue. Just go for it. And there we go. Now we're gonna press open the last last piece of this block. There you go. And so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your block over to the cutting table, turn it over, use your rotary cutter and a ruler, and you're gonna cut on the um, stipple lined all the way around so that your block um, actually is gonna measure at that point four and a half inches because of the extra half or quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. So here we are over at the cutting table. We've completed the last round. Uh, in real life, I probably would give this one last good press before I started um, trimming down the block, but just for demo purposes here, we are going to, again, I'm a lefty, so if this gives you a headache to look at, then, uh, Turn it around in your head. And we're cutting this off pretty much on that step of line. So you can see. Now you have this cute little block. You have perfect seam allowances. So this is the last part of assembling or, or sort of think to think about when you're doing foundation paper piecing. Um, I started taking a little bit of paper out here in the middle, but what I do um, normally do when I'm doing foundation paper piecing is that I wait to take the paper off until the entire quilt top is assembled. Because with the paper here, when you lay the blocks together to sew, when you're assembling your block, you're actually going to start right here on the corner and you're going to sew down, well, you're going to sew all the way across, obviously, but you're going to sew on the solid line. And when you're putting all these little blocks together with the paper foundation still up, the edges will butt up and you'll be, it's very easy to line things. And then when the entire quilt top is actually put together, that's when I take the paper off and that's when you, um, you don't vacuum your house right before you're going to do this because it does make a mess. It doesn't take all that long to do. You just have to be um, prepared that somehow, although you're trying to hit the trash can, little bits of paper will be everywhere afterwards. So just be prepared for that. And then you'll have a beautiful quilt top that people will be really impressed at how precise your piecing was. And all you did was sit around and not measure anything 
after you're started. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and I hope you feel inspired to go and play with these little log cabin templates that I made for you guys. And let's see if I have a picture of them here. Here they are, so again, they're available at FeliciasWorld.com and you can also check your local quilt store to see if they're carrying them. Have a great day and happy quilting everybody.